Alright guys, the tough decision. The very tough decision. I don't know what to do right now. Oh, I feel so bad dogging Zoe. I'm sorry Zoe, I, I, I can't, like, if I, if I choose Zoe, I have no future. You know what, let's go with Zoe, screw it, you only live once, screw it, you can always redeem yourself, alright? Alright, Zoe, I'll come see your show. You will? Yeah, I'll ask if the retest can be brought forward, but in the event that it can't. I still want to be there for you. Iris. Zoe's eyes grow teary. And a smile filled with relief and gratitude masters her face. Thank you so much, Iris. Really. Don't be silly. You are my sister, Zoe, and I want to be there for you. I know how much this show means to you, and even if it means a potential setback in my education, I'm prepared to take that risk. Just make sure to play your heart out, have fun, and get scouted by a major record label. Heh, <laughs> no promises on that third one. But you can rest assured that I'll do my best. With you watching me from the audience, there's no way I can fail. Zoe squeezes my hand, giving me a look that makes my knees weak. Well, um, I guess we should get back to class. Right, well, guess I'll see you after school. That was very tough, guys. Phew, I made it. Wow, time skip already? I've taken so long to get ready that I missed the train over. I had to wait 15 minutes for another one. The event was down a side street, well, off the rain road, but I managed to find it within a couple of blocks. There's a sign by the fence, indicating this is where I need to be. Don't fidget, Iris. Look calm. But it's not super busy, but a surprising amount of people here. There's no chairs or anything, but it looks like there's an open bar to my left. Not that I have any desire to make use of it, even if I could. Even after, I mean, after some time watch raiding, the lights eventually dim. A drummer and guitarist slide into their places on stage. There's a man in the center who raises a microphone to his lips. Ladies and gentlemen, the stage proudly presents Lead in Pink. There's a spattering of applause as Zoe band, Zoe's band flies on stage. The drummer bangs his sticks toward, I mean, he sticks together. And another guitarist points three fingers at the crowd, bobbing his head as he walks. I'm not sure what that means, but the audience seems to like it. I want, I do, and then I see Zoe. She looks restrained, cool and unruffled. Despite this, she practically beams with pride as she spots me. Lifting my arms as hard as I can, I bounce and wave like a faithful grippy. Zoe grins even more, then restrains herself once again to focus on her guitar. And then the show begins. I can't keep the jaw my, off my face. Zoe looks so cool I can hardly bear it. The rowdy audience fades away as I concentrate on the drumming of her guitar. By song 3, there's a sheen of pers perspiration on her face. It makes her look like an angel. When the song trails to an end, there's loud applause, applause and cheering. I too clap enthusiastically. Before I know it, the show ends. The announcer comes back on stage to pull in the second band for that night. The crowd roars so loudly that my ears instinctively try to block out the noise. I wait anxiously among the escaping masses as Zoe's show comes to an end. Fortunately for Zoe, and unfortunately for me, the venue is packed. I can't move an inch without bumping into someone. I have a little choice, I have little choice, but to either go with the flow or wait for the crowd to disperse. Oh man, it's over already? I can't believe this. There aren't even CDs for any sale. How am I supposed to deal with this? Yeah man, yeah yeah, your life is over. Hey, don't act like that, you're interested. You wave your arms around like an idiot during the first encore. Shut up, you're just testing because you can't perv on that punk chick anymore. What? Hey, that's not like that. Sure it is. Just don't do something stupid like try to slip backstage, okay? I just said it's not like that. Scores of people continue to vacate, <laughs> but promises. While talking about the show, I sound pretty retarded changing voices. In particular, many of them seem to be interested in Zoe. As a temporary replacement, her face is unfamiliar, and her presence was initially a point of contention for the diehard fans in the audience. But as she played, Zoe proved that she was every bit as talented as the band member she was replacing. 
and before long she had amassed a following of her own. How do I get to Zoe? I make my way through the dirty venue, now having lost its magic from Zoe's show. The popular band that is main show jerk around like broken animatronics on the platform. Not to my taste at all. Ah, at least with Zoe's band I could understand some of the lyrics. Looking around at the crowd, everyone is dressed in grungy, grungy black clothes that remind me of Zoe's. I'll probably stick out like a pink doll in a Halloween store. I definitely don't belong here. Not really sure where to go. My heart pounds as I approach the side of the stage, slowly making my way through the crowd. Once I'm up close, I spot Zoe's band members. Yo, you guys just about ready to head off? Almost. Let me grab a few more things. Alright, mate. I mean, wait. I thought I said mate. Alright, have you sorted things out with the newbie with the newbie yet? Yeah, we're gonna deliver our ride back home once we're done. Sweet. I'm gonna have Lee first then. Give her my best, alright? Her performance tonight was great. Tell her yourself at practice tomorrow. Finally, clearing off the stage, the last of Zoe's bandmates begin to leave. Only a few fans and venue staff members remain now. I should be able to locate Zoe. Thinking that I head toward the stage, keeping an eye out for my favourite guitarist. Wow, hold on, where do you think you're going, little lady? Only staff and performers are allowed beyond this point. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm actually looking for my sister. Seeing this was her first show with this band. You might have seen her on stage. Yeah, the slender black haired guitarist. Hmm. You expect me to believe you're her sister? You look nothing alike. Even if you are related, rules are rules. No audience members beyond this point. No way. Can't you make an exception just this once? Not happening, like I said. Rules are rules, right? She heard you. Zoe! Before I can make a spectacle uh, spectacle out of myself, Zoe emerges from behind the security guard. Seeing the two of us together, the security guard shrugs his shoulders and walks away, leaving Zoe and I alone together. Zoe, thank goodness you're here. I wasn't sure if I... Zoe? While I'm addressing Zoe, she suddenly moves closer and throws her arms around me. I can tell from the strength in her arm and a quick breathing that Zoe is still amped up from her performance and in all likelihood that feeling won't soon disappear. Zoe, please, you're hurting me. Sorry, sorry. I lost myself for a second there. I'm so glad you're here. Of course, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Of a very important test. Well, I can worry about that later. Zoe cheeks tint a lovely pink as I smile at her. I can't really blame you for getting excited though. You told me this would be a big show, but I didn't realize just how right you were until the music started playing. There were so many people down here that I thought I was going to get swept away. I know, right? Did you see the size of the audience? It was huge. Way bigger than I was expecting. I was so nervous that I was shaking, looking down at so many people, thinking about the expectations of me. I was totally freaking out. But then, you know what? I looked down at the audience and I saw you looking up at me. And that was it. I just started playing. I forgot all about the audience and the venue. I forgot all about the ticket money. I completely and I completely devoted myself to playing for you. Before I realized it, we played the first five songs. I couldn't even hear my own self doubt over the years. This was my best show yet. I went and I owe it all to you, Iris. Smiling brightly, Zoe takes my hand in hers. I look down at our hands, minced together, then glance back at Zoe and return her smile with one of my own. Don't be silly. The only thing you owe this night, the only thing you owe this night, is to your own hard work and dedication. You are amazing tonight, Zoe. I thought so. Your bandmates thought so, and so did hundreds of unbiased, unbiased strangers. And it's just like you told me. There's a start of something big for you, the chance of a lifetime, and I'm glad I could be here to see it. Iris, still smiling as we hold hands. I feel myself slowly pulling towards Zoe. As a sister, I'm proud of Zoe. I want to pour, pour praise on her as I shout to want anyone present that she's my sister. That she's going to be a superstar one day. But as a friend, and maybe something more, what I feel as I move closer to Zoe is something harder to speak of so openly. I stare at Zoe's lips, which are still quivering in excitement and curled up into a smile, and unconsciously I begin to inch my face closer to hers. 
Zoe widens her eyes lightly, slightly, but she doesn't say anything. Instead, she wraps her smile into one which exudes an entirely different emotion than months but moments ago. Zoe and I move closer together, and as my hip lips begin to part, Ah, there you are. What? I've been looking for you everywhere for you. Come on, we're about to get going. You still want to ride home, don't you? If you don't hurry, we're going to... Hmm? The young woman who I recognize as the band's vocalist suddenly glances towards me. Oh, oh! Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll give you two a minute to ca uh, catch up, okay? No, wait, this isn't what it looks like. No, 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 it's cool, it's cool. Have you at it, you two. And don't worry, Zoe. On to the others, you will look hooking up with your girlfriend while they waited in the rain. In vain. Then. I oh, forgot to say rain. Then. I'm telling you, that isn't it. Zoe, why aren't you saying anything? While I frantically try to hide my embarrassment, Zoe takes a different approach. She averts her gaze while blushing slightly, neither confirming or denying her bandmate's assumption. Haha. <laughs> You've got a live one there, Zoe. Just make it quick, okay? We're gonna head off soon. Oh, and if your girlfriend wants to ride, we do have room for at least one more. Don't be a stranger, okay? With those parting words, the vocalist waves goodbye and returns backstage. I turn towards Zoe once more, still speechless and blushing. She allows a faint smile to appear on her face. Put behind that smile and the embarrassment of her having our relationship thrown into question so openly, I see a hint of sadness. She didn't say I was like her girlfriend, but she also didn't say we were sisters. Sisters. Well, there's that. We still don't know if we are really blood related. Ah, oh, stupid brain. So reminding me of that. Let me enjoy my evening. But what I'm going to do if she really is my actual sister? My grip on her arm loosens. I stay at nothing. Downcast. What's wrong? Nothing. Is it all that noise? Is it all the noise? No, it's not. I gotta tell them we're ready to go and we can get out of here. Thank you for being there for me tonight. Her genuine smile was enough to make my pressure. My previous thoughts fade into a pool of happiness. Wow. Phew. I'm exhausted. I'm not surprised. That was quite a show, Zoe. Tell me about it. All I want to do now is lay down and go to sleep. I'd better take a shower first though. I'm covered in sweat. Ah, good idea. I'll get started on dinner then. So if you hear some noise, uh, wiping noise, it's kind of I'm kind of sick as well, don't miss. Are you sure you wouldn't prefer to join me? Uh, are you serious? Yeah, join her, join her, join her. Why not? It's just the two of us here. After all, we don't need to hold back. Oh gosh, I um, well, I unconsciously lower my head as my face heats up. Before I can give a response, a smirk re appears on Zoe's face. Don't get so worked up. I'm just kidding. But if you work up the guts to join me, I won't turn you away. Still wearing a smirk. That hurts a true intention. I can't tell if Zoe is joking or not. But even if she isn't, she's correct about one thing. I certainly don't have the guts to join her of my own accord. Ha. Huh. Why do you have to be so difficult to read, Zoe? If you just say, honestly, if you just honestly say what's on your mind, without turning everything into a joke, I'd... Wait a minute. My eyes catch a letter. By our front door. What on earth? Huh? Hmm? What's wrong? Zoe, it's here. What's here? The test. It's here. The results are here. Huh? What test? The professor let you move the test forward after all? The professor? Oh, um, no. Not that test. I'm talking about the, uh, you know. The genetic test. Oh. Zoe's face is coloured with both surprise and anxiety as those final words leave my mouth. I'd almost forgotten what we even took this test. This is quite a surprise. Yeah, you can say that again. So, what does I say? I look at the sealed envelope in my hands. The envelope begins to open as I undo the seal, and inside I find several sheets of paper. Um, let me see. Blood is normal. No traces of any STDs or the like. Um, there's quite a lot of information here. I should hope so. Th that chest wasn't cheap, you know. Just get to the match, would you? Right, right, I'm on it. I should look this over again later and make sure I have a clean bill of health. 
With that optimistic thought in mind, I skim through the rest of the text until I land on the final page. Ah, here we go. Probability of patient A and patient B being direct blood relatives is 100% a perfect match. I look up from the paper and gouge Zoe's reaction. Gouge? I think gouge. She stares at me with her eyes wide open, as though she's actually surprised to hear that we are siblings. 100%? There's nothing even remote possibility that we are not related. Uh, it says here that results are rounded to the nearest 0.0001%. So it's not impossible, but... It looks like we are sisters after all. I can feel the envelope shaking in my hands as my mind processes what I've just said. Zoe and I are, without a doubt, 100% blood related sisters. The things we did together, the days we went on, the kiss we shared. We two sisters, offspring of the same patient parents did all those things with t with and to each other. Without a thought for what it might lead to, we deepened our relationship. We flirted in public, felt each other up at school. We became as intimate, intimate as a real couple. But now that reality has caught up to us, that may no longer be possible. This can't be happening. This has to be some kind of mistake, right? Zoe. No, no I get it. They mixed up our results with someone else's, right? Yeah, that's it. Or maybe they just screwed up the test. Nobody's perfect after all. Zoe, please. Ah, why am I getting so worked up over a stupid test? It's obviously wrong. I mean, how can we be sisters? Sisters don't go on dates or kiss or do any of that stuff. We're just an ordinary couple, right? There's no way we could be related. Don't you think so, Iris? Come on, tell me. I'm right. I look away at Zoe, please, with tears in her eyes. My own eyes begin to grow teary. And I can feel my anxiety getting the best of me. Stop it, Zoe. Pleading with me isn't going to change anything. It was a 100% match. We really are sisters. Iris? Hey, come on. How come? How can we, that be right? We grew up on different continents. We can never even meet until we both came here. There's no chance that we are related. This is all just... Damn it, Zoe. Just accept it already. We both knew from the start. We both knew that we were sisters all along, right? But that's okay, it doesn't change anything. Nothing has to be different between us. We just keep going like we have been, you know? I can hear the desperation in my own voice as I try to convince Zoe that everything is okay. Even if we are sisters, nothing needs to change. We knew that there was a high probability of that from the beginning, and it never stopped us until now. Why should it be any different this far along? Far along? No, I can't. I can't accept this. If we really are sisters, then all of those things we did Zoe covers her mouth with her hand as though she's about to throw up. I kissed you. I kissed my own sister. I held you in my arms and kissed you. I took off your clothing, ran my fingers down your bare flesh. What kind of sister does that? What kind of disgusting human being could do that to their own sister? If we really are sisters, then you and I. All of those things I did to you. Stop it, Zoe. Please. Look, it doesn't matter to me, okay? Who cares if we're siblings? It's not like we'd have children anyway, right? Come on, can't we just go back to how we were on an hour ago? Zoe shakes her head while still cupping her mouth with her hand. Impossible. I may be a lot of things, but that line is only even I can't cross. Why? Tell me, tell me how this changes a single thing. It doesn't, doesn't, right? I still love you, and you still love me. We're just two people in love, the same as always. Why should things like blood matter? I don't care if you're my sister. Why do you... Once again, Zoe shakes her head. It's not that simple, Iris. The hell it isn't. It's illegal for us to be together, Iris. I... We can't be doing stuff like this. Then why now? After a stupid piece of paper? You can't tell me all this time when you were pretending we weren't sisters. Oh god. I'm sad. I feel bad. Zoe? I... I need to be alone. Zoe, stop! No, I won't accept this. I didn't care what the test results were. Ever since I met you, I felt so different. Since the moment I laid my eyes on you, Zoe, I... Before Zoe has a chance to say anything, I put everything on the line. And forced my lips onto hers. Startled, Zoe tries to pull away, but I enclose my arms around her shoulders. Hmm? To my relief, she kisses back. 
She gently places her arms around me and kisses me back, closing her eyes and allowing herself to be taken away. Her breathing slows and Zoe finally begins to calm down. Her soft lips move against my own with an increasing urgency. I slide my hand behind her neck, feeling her warmth. How can something so simple feel this good? As I think that, her tongue finds its way into my mouth and we intertwine them. It doesn't matter if we are sisters. It doesn't matter. If I can feel like this, if I can feel like this when I'm with her, then how can it be wrong? I can't help myself. The excitement from the kiss, so his body pressing up against mine, all my pent up frustrations come crashing out. I let out a small moan. Zoe, like a spell being broken. Zoe's eyes open, clarity returning to them at a rapid pace. We were in the middle of kissing each other like lovers would. Zoe's lips pull away from mine. I'm sorry. I can't do this. No, please. I, I love you. I try to kiss her again, but Zoe is already backing up and twisting out of my embrace. We can't do this. I can't do this. Zoe blurts out before she runs out the door. No, please. I'm sorry. Please forget it ever happened. I grab hold of Zoe's arm, desperate to pull her close. The moment I think Zoe has calmed herself, she opens her eyes in realization and shoves me away. Zoe? Shut up! Get away from me, Iris. Just leave me alone. Zoe runs out of the apartment, slamming the door shut behind her. I quickly follow after her, but by the time I op open the door, her figure is nowhere to be found. Zoe? Zoe, where are you? Please, Zoe, answer me! I run outside in pursuit of Zoe. The rain that started during our ride home has gotten heavier, and I find it difficult to see far into the distance. I can't see a single other person on the street, let alone Zoe. Zoe? Zoe! Oh god, this has got this is so like emotional and stuff. I shout at the top of my lungs, praying that Zoe might hear my voice and come back. But my words have no effect, whether they are being drowned out by the rain, ignored, or simply misdirected. Zoe does not respond. Damn it. God freaking damn it. Why? Why now? Just when we were getting along so well. My legs buckle and I hit the ground hard. The water drenches my dress and underwear and I don't care. Nobody can see me anyway and even if they could, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> I'm sad. It's always gone. My sister. My girlfriend. No matter what I call her, the person I love most has just disappeared. Possibly for good. Was it really so wrong? All I want to ask was to show Zoe that I still loved her, and yet she pushed me away. I wrap my arms around my torso and hang my head. The rain has soaked every inch of my body, and yet I don't feel a thing. My entire body is numb, inside and out. Zoe rejected my love, and no other feeling can topple that. Zoe. Zoe! Water streams down my face as I close my eyes and lurch forward. Whether it's the rain or my own tears, the feeling of crushing anguish is unmistakable. All I want to do is crawl into a hole and die. Zoe really was my sister. Not just my half-sister either. Even our mothers are the same. And yet I... I can't feel tears beginning to form in the corners of my eyes. With my own sister, I slowly formed a relationship. One which began to develop into a romantic relationship. I became romantically involved with my own flesh and blood sister. I committed a grave sin which even my father would not overlook. And yet... Even now, I didn't regret it. Where are you, Zoe? You should be here with me. Even if we couldn't kiss or touch one another anymore, we could still be together, just as normal sisters, right? So why? Forlornly, I return to my room, not sure what about, not sure what the future will hold. Oh, that was sad. Oh, poor Zoe, poor Iris. I feel so bad for them. Oh. For the fifth day in a row, the entire day passes by without me catching a single glimpse of Zoe. Ever since I kissed Zoe after hearing the test results, I haven't been able to get in contact with her at all. She hasn't seen she hasn't been coming to school or even coming home. Nobody has heard from her, and nobody has seemed to know where she is. Zoe has vanished, and it's all my fault. Zoe, where could he have you gone? Just come back home. I'm really starting to get worried. I make dinner with tears in my eyes as I realize just how much I miss Zoe. 
My mind is filled with thoughts about how great it would be to cook together again, or even just to eat together. But no matter how much I lament her absence, she doesn't return. Zoe, are you in here? I'm trespassing your room. Hurry up and tell me off before I start going through your things. I enter Zoe's room while calling out to the empty space. Surely enough, Zoe is nowhere to be seen. It's just me alone in an empty room filled with Zoe's belongings. Maybe I can find a clue where, about where she's gone. Zoe couldn't have gone that far, right? I look around Zoe's room for anything out of the ordinary. I check her browsing history on her computer for bus and train timetables, look through her trash for receipts, and even check if she's bought spare clothes with her. Before all of her searching, I find very little. Zoe has taken the bag she brought with her when she first moved in. She also brought her guitar and several, steps of, several sets of clothing. Whenever Zoe went, she was prepared to make her disappointing act last for, long, last for a long time. Who am I kidding? Zoe could be halfway across the country by now. She isn't coming back. She's never coming back. I sit down on Zoe's bed and grab her pillow. Her scent lingers, but her warmth is gone, along with her presence. Even so, I hug her pillow tightly. I wrap my arms around it and rest my head on top. Closing my eyes as tears begin to form in my eyes. I can't keep doing this. I can't keep torturing myself like this. Wishing Zoe would come back. I need to find her and bring her home. Because without Zoe here, I'm just... I strengthen my hold on the pillow. With my eyes still closed, I imagine that the pillow is Zoe. I hug Zoe as tightly as I can, burying my face in her chest as I indulge in her warmth. But the fantasy only lasts for a moment. I open my eyes and find not Zoe but a pillow, stained with my tears and mu mus mucus. Z Zoe, it's not, it's just not the same. Living here isn't the same without you, Zoe. I can't even bring myself to leave the apartment out of fear that you might return while I'm out, then leave again. How am I supposed to go on like this, Zoe? Tell me. I scream into the pillow, desperately, wearing my face so that the world can't see the pathetic look on my face. I know I'm being irrational, I know that Zoe can't hear me, and that becoming a shut-in won't bring her back, but I can't help myself, Zoe is the only thing in, on my mind, and until I find her, that isn't going to change, you can't just insert yourself into my life and then vanish, that's not fair Zoe, you said you wanted to be with me, was it all a lie? I pull my face away from the pillow and throw it off at the door, everything changed when we took that stupid test, we were both happy. We were both so happy, living a sister who only acknowledged our relationship when it suited us. All I wanted is to go back to that time, before we were so about our blood relation. If we never took that test, we could have been happy, living in denial and making up our own truth. But we just had to know, and now, because of that, Zoe is. I clench my hands, unconsciously, digging my nails into my palms. Nails pierced the skin, drawing little drips, little drops of blood as I failed to contain myself. I wish I never took that damn test. Why? Why did we have to know the truth? Couldn't we just have left good enough alone? Couldn't we be an ordinary couple oblivious to everything around us? Other people do it. Why couldn't we? I feel drops of blood escape from my clenched fist. Seeing that, a small semblance of rationality returns to me. I unclench my fist then fall backwards onto Zoe's bed. Our relationship was doomed from the start, wasn't it? How could the world ever accept two sisters? We were just fooling ourselves. There's no way we could ever be together. And yet, I wipe my bloody hands on the sheets and then bring them to my face as if to hide them, to hide behind them. I don't want to live in a world where I can't be with the person I love. Even if nobody else understands, I want to be together with Zoe. And now, and now I'm forever. And if I can't do that, then I raise my hand above my face, watching through teary eyes as a drop of blood falls into my face. I don't know what I'll do. That was, that's, that's just so sad. After a sleepless night of incessant warring and tortured thoughts of hypothetical scenarios, school passes, by, passes me by in the blink of an eye. Even after my final class ends, I find myself slouched over my desk, staring at nothing while my self-loathing gets the best of me. Honestly, what was I thinking? I'm her older sister for crying out loud. I should have read the situation better and helped Zoe to calm down. Instead, I forced myself on her. I pressured her to take the action then and there. 
and now she's gone, and it's starting to feel like I'll never see her again. I'd be more worried about your sanity. Talking to yourself is never a good sign. Huh? I look up to find one of my classmates standing in front of me. When did you get here? Said before you started stalking and burying your head in your arms. Seriously, Iris, what's wrong with you? Isn't that the time of the month? It's nothing like that. I'm just... Worried about Zoe? Yeah, how did you know? She hasn't shown up at school for a week. You've been gloomy every single day. It doesn't take a genius to figure it out. Oh, so it's that obvious, huh? I'm afraid so. So what happened? You want to talk about it? It's difficult to say. I think I may have forced Zoe to do something she hated. Really? Doesn't sound like something you'd do. I know, but I wasn't thinking clearly, okay? I let my emotion get the best of me, and I just... Alright, alright, calm down. I'm sure it's nothing you can't fix. Have you spoken to Zoe about what happened since then? Your best bet would be definitely be to talk things through. I wish, I, I haven't seen Zoe at all since then. She's gone to such great lengths to avoid me, that we haven't spoken even once. She could be dead in a gutter, for I know. Okay, that's a little morbid. And baseless, I might add. Zoe's alive and well. She is? You've seen her? Um, well, it's not like I saw her in person. More like I know where she'll be, not where she is. I saw a poster for this band that's playing tonight, and Zoe was listed as one of the members. It's a fairly well-known band too. At least around these parts, she must really... Where? Where did you see the poster? Over at the train station. If you go over to the ticket case, there's this... Thanks! War of posters. <sighs> You're welcome, Iris. Oh, my throat hurts. Fuck. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna have to end it here. It's been quite a while. Hope you're enjoying it so far. And remember, see you next time. Peace out, yo.